Welcome, Ukraine War Today, Ukraine's defense forces repel about 30 enemy attacks in four directions. In the past 24 hours, Ukraine's defense forces have repelled about 30 enemy attacks in the Bakhmut, Avdiivka, Marinka, and Shakhtarsk directions. The relevant statement was made by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine on Facebook. Russian troops continue focusing efforts on conducting offensive actions in the aforementioned directions. The Donetsk region's Bakhmut is remaining the epicenter of hostilities. Over the past day, Russian invaders have launched 28 airstrikes and two missile strikes, and opened fire with multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, about 20 times, last night the enemy used 12 Shahid-136 suicide drones to attack Ukraine's territory, and eight of them were destroyed by Ukrainian defenders. The threat of Russian missile and airstrikes is persisting all over Ukraine. In the Volyn and Polisha directions, the operational situation remained rather unchanged. Belarusian units continue completing tasks within the areas bordering with Ukraine. Some Russian military units are remaining within the territory of Belarus. In the Siversky and Slobozansky directions, the aggressor continues to keep a certain number of troops within the border areas of Russia's Bryansk, Kursk and Belgorod regions. Over the past day, Russian troops have opened fire on the Chernihiv region's Leonivka, the Sumy region's Kindertivka, and the Kharkiv region's Hoptivka and Vovchansky Kuteri. In the Kupiansk direction, Russian invaders attempted to improve their tactical position, launched an attack near Lyman Persiai, but had no success. The Kharkiv regions Krosna Pershi, Verikna, Zapan, Kotlyarivka, and Beristov came under enemy fire. In the Lyman direction, Russian troops did not conduct offensive actions. The enemy launched artillery strikes on the Luhansk regions Stomakivka, Makhivka, Nevsk, Debrova, and Bilohorivka, the Donetsk regions Ivanivka, Verkhneokamiansk, Spurn, and Zanivka. In the Bakhmut direction, Russian invaders continue conducting offensive actions. Fierce battles for the city of Bakhmut continue. Near Bodenivka, the enemy conducted unsuccessful offensive actions. The enemy shelling affected the Donetsk regions Rozdalivka, Orokovo Vasilivka, Bakhmut, Ivanivsk, Chesivyar, Oleksandr Shultyn, Bila Ora, Dalyivka, Zalizn, Pivnikn, Pivden, and New York. In the Avdiivka direction, Russian occupiers were conducting offensive actions near the Donetsk regions Novokalinov, Stepov, and Nevelsk, but had no success. In the Marinka direction, Ukrainian forces repelled numerous enemy attacks near the Donetsk region's Marinka. In the Shakhtarsk direction, Russian troops conducted unsuccessful offensive actions near Volodar. The enemy opened fire on the Donetsk regions Velika Novosilka, Zolodaniva, Prekistivka, and Volodar. In the Zaporizhia and Kherson directions, Russian occupiers continue holding defense. The enemy launched mortar and artillery strikes on the Zaporizhia regions Olhivsk, Malinivka, Huliapol, Novodanilivka, Novoandrivka, and the city of Kherson. In the past 24 hours, Ukraine's Air Force has launched one strike on an enemy personnel and military equipment cluster. Ukrainian missile and artillery units hit one Russian personnel cluster, one air defense missile system, and two more important enemy targets. Russia admits its own warplane accidentally bombed Russian city of Belgorod, near Ukraine border. When a powerful blast shook a Russian city near the border of Ukraine residents thought it was a Ukrainian attack. But the Russian military quickly acknowledged that it was a bomb accidentally dropped by one of its own warplanes. Belgorod, a city of 340,000 about 25 miles east of the border with Ukraine, has faced regular drone attacks that Russian authorities blame on the Ukrainian military, but the explosion late Thursday was far more powerful than anything its residents had heard before. 
witnesses reported a low hissing sound followed by a blast that made nearby apartment buildings tremble and threw a car on a store roof. It left a 66-foot-wide crater in the middle of a tree-lined boulevard flanked by apartment buildings, shattering their windows, damaging several cars and injuring two residents. A third person was later hospitalized with hypertension. Immediately after the explosion, Russian commentators and military bloggers were abuzz with theories about what weapon Ukraine had used for the attack. Many called for a powerful retribution. But about an hour later, the Russian defense ministry acknowledged that the explosion was caused by a weapon accidentally dropped by one of its own Su-34 bombers. It didn't offer any further details, but military experts said the weapon likely was a powerful 1,100-pound bomb. In Thursday's blast, the weapon was apparently set to explode with a small delay after impact to hit underground facilities. Belgorod Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said local authorities decided to temporarily resettle residents of a nine-story apartment building near the blast while it was inspected to make sure it hadn't suffered irreparable structural damage. The explosion in Belgorod followed the crash of a Russian warplane next to a residential building in the port city of Yeysk on the Sea of Azov that killed 15 people. Yeysk hosts a big Russian airbase with warplanes flying missions over Ukraine. Military experts have noted that as the number of Russian military flights have increased sharply during the fighting, so have the crashes and accidents. Analysts and U.S. officials have described Russia's tactics in the Ukraine war as akin to the methods applied by the armies on both sides of the First World War, as Moscow has thrown wave after wave of both man and machine at the front lines for months, rapidly depleting its resources with little to show in return. Last month it emerged that the Russian military was rolling Soviet-era tanks off storage bases where they had been mothballed for decades, presumably to bolster its forces amid the wanton destruction of its hardware on the battlefield. Ukraine has also relied heavily on its stocks of old Soviet-era tanks and other weapons during the war, but it has begun to take delivery of dozens of modern battle tanks promised by its European partners, with U.S. tanks also expected to arrive this year. In March, Poland said it would also give Ukraine about a dozen MiG-29 fighter jets, becoming the first NATO member to fulfill Kiev's increasingly urgent requests for warplanes to defend itself against the Russian invasion.